Good morning. It's a joy for us in Bloomfield Presbyterian Church to be able to share with you today in this service of worship, as together we explore the theme of faith, not fear. Whoever you are, wherever you are listening, welcome. And join with us in our opening praise, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. prayers this morning will be led for us by our senior associate, Dr. Bill Adley. Let us pray. Eternal God, High King of Heaven, to you be all honour, glory and praise. We pray as we have just sung and acknowledge our need and our sin. We are a short-sighted people. We only see what is close around us. So our concerns are all about ourselves and our families and our things. In your mercy, forgive us and grant us vision that is clearer and broader and longer. We bless you that the Lord Jesus is the light of the world. He came to this earth to shine into dark places and to show the Father's love. 
May his light shine into our lives so that we can look on our neighbors as he did with a compassionate heart and a helping hand. For he alone can rescue. He alone can save. He alone can lift us from the grave. And to the only God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be highest praise, now and forever. Amen. Bible reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 21 to 42. It's a story about Jairus' daughter and a sick woman. Listen how one incident is incorporated into the event of the other, for these two stories are inextricably tied up together. It will be read for us by Ross Curry and Gillian Rainey. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 42. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. The one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, 
My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hand on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion, with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the children's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. At this, they were completely astonished. Thank you, Ross and Gillian. In Bloomfield, the children always have a song especially for themselves, just before they lead for, leave for Kid Zone. Our song today is one which we just love, and it was written by a lady who grew up close by here in East Belfast called Sandy Hooks. Her song picks up on that compassion of Jesus that we've just heard about in that story, and the song is called Your Name is Love.
that just a beautiful song, Your Name is Love. I'd like to introduce you now to a member of our congregation, Malcolm McClure, who's in the flooring business, but who enjoys art in his spare time. Malcolm, thank you for agreeing to chat with us this morning. It's good, thank you. You've recently returned from Budapest, the capital of Hungary, and there you had the opportunity to meet an artist by the name of Andres Simon. Yeah. Yes, um, I did, and uh, I met Andres. He's been connected with a church in Hungary that we've enjoyed a long relationship with, and we've enjoyed exchange visits with them over the years, and uh, working both here and in Hungary. And last month, yes, I visited Andres and had the opportunity to go to his studio where we talked about art and we talked about how we might explore ideas of working together. Well, you were impressed with his work, and uh, in fact, you've invited him to visit us here in Bloomfield over the Easter period. That's right, yes. Yes, I've known about his work for quite some time, and I've, I've always enjoyed his interpretation of some of the familiar stories and themes um, in the Gospels and in the Bible. And we thought this might fit in with our contemplative uh, worship in Holy Week, and um, he's agreed to visit us. Um, so we're hoping he might not only come and bring some of his work, but also engage in the services that we've planned leading up to Easter. Um, and we will display his work in the church and allow people to use those in those days leading up so they can, they can, it can direct their thoughts and prayers. And during the services, he'll do some live work as well. Yeah, this is, a, this is an interesting idea, I think, where we're going to ask Andres to actually produce a work of art during the message in the services in the evenings. Um, and we're... For example, we might do something about washing the disciples' feet, and he will produce a, a drawing of that as the service is going on. Um, of all of Andres uh, Simon's artwork, what do you respond to most? Well, he, he, he draws and, and paints in two different styles, one of which is, is quite detailed and complicated, and you've got to examine the detail in that to, to see the message. And the other way that he paints is in a very stylized, simple line drawing, and um, that tends to distill the message down to its core, uh, and I think it gives us an opportunity to think in a different, different way about um, how that message is, is imparted. And often those messages are about redemption and hope and grace and healing, and those are the ones that I like best. Thank you, Malcolm. It's, it's wonderful because different people respond uh, to um, the gospel in different ways. Some people respond by hearing mm -hmm. and other people by seeing, so uh, it's great that um, we have artists who are able to help us in that way. A song that our Hungarian friends introduced to us some time ago is in the form of a round. It's called, You Are My Strength When I Am Weak, You Are My Treasure That I Seek. And the first verse we're going to sing in the Hungarian language.
came to Jesus in a panic. His 12-year-old daughter was dying. Could anything else matter to this important man? It was the greatest crisis of his up-to-now comfortable life. Isn't it strange how a tragedy amazingly concentrates the mind? All those things that seemed so vital before now don't matter one little bit. It was true of Jairus, and it's true of us. We get all worked up and upset by silly things. They seem so important at the time, but when an emergency happens, they don't matter at all. And that's what happened here. Jairus was what Mark tells us was a synagogue ruler, a big shot in the town. Not someone likely to show his emotions in public and certainly not in front of Jesus. But when faced with the loss of his precious little girl, dignity didn't matter. This is what Mark 5.22 says. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. Please come, put your hands on my little daughter so that she will be healed and live. You can sense the desperation in his voice. Well, wonderfully, the Lord Jesus agreed to go with him. But before he moved any distance at all, Jesus paused. Can't you picture Jairus jumping up and down from one foot to the other as Jesus stopped to speak with a woman? Why couldn't he just ignore her, get to his house? After all, this individual had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Couldn't she have waited another half hour and let his 12-year-old daughter have a chance to live? Mark deliberately tells us, that the girl was 12 years old and that the woman had been in this condition for 12 years. Now, why does he give us that detail? To point out two things. One, that this woman's illness was chronic. It had cost her a lot over a protracted period of time, physically, emotionally, and in doctor's bills. But secondly, during that same time and not far away, a baby had been growing up, becoming a healthy young girl. To Jesus, incidentally, the long-term sufferer was just as important to him as the person in emergency acute need. For Jesus, no one has the monopoly of suffering and pain. Each individual has significance for him. Who touched my clothes, he asked. Now that comment seemed as daft a question to the disciples as a lad in the middle of a rugby scrum giving out for being elbowed by the other players. But not so. Power had gone out of Jesus. As the woman had secretly come up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, 
So Jesus would not rest until the woman who had been healed in the spot had told everyone about that experience. It was Augustine who once said, Faith is to believe what you do not see, and the reward of faith is to see what you believe. So it was here. Jesus reassured her with these remarkable words, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I love that. In the middle of her tentative hopes and fears, Jesus brought this woman healing. The word here actually means salvation. The traumas of her previous 12 years now beautifully replaced by peace for the future. Her faith in Jesus had made her whole. But while Jesus was still speaking to this particular woman and bringing her such joy, messengers were coming to Jairus with the tragic news that his little girl had in fact died. Don't bother the teacher anymore, they chastised. But ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. Dismissing the wailing mourners who were crying outside the home, he took the child's dad and mum and three of his disciples, Peter, James and John, into the place where the child was lying. Taking her by the hand, Jesus said to her, Talatha kum, which means, little lamb, it's time to get up. Immediately she stood up and walked around. Just as the woman had reached out, her hand to touch Jesus and be healed. So now Jesus reached out his hand to touch the little girl. And the power of God flowed into her body and she was raised back to life. A 19th century Prussian by the name of George Muller once said, Faith does not operate in the realms of the possible. There is no glory for God in what is humanly possible. Faith begins where human power ends. And so it was here. Faith began for both Jairus and the sick woman where their human power had come to an end. But before we think about the implications of this story for us today, let's hear these words being sung by the choir. He mends our hearts... He keeps our ways, he lights our nights, and he leads our days. It's a beautiful piece by Keith Getty called Hear All Creation. Thank you. 
Mark chapter 5, then, is a story about faith conquering fear. For 12 years, this woman had suffered a great deal. She had been a person consumed by fear. Fear for herself, fear for her relationships, fear for her future. Maybe that's how you feel today, tortured by fear. Well, the first invitation to you this morning is to reach out and touch Jesus. Now, for you, as with this poor woman, that may entail severe testing. She wanted her faith to remain private. Jesus wanted her to go public. She wanted to keep things quiet. Jesus wanted her to tell the whole truth. But in being tested by Jesus, her faith in him was gloriously rewarded. And after all those years of pain, she was miraculously freed from her suffering. Jesus let her reach out and touch him. And he met her at her point of need. Unafraid of her contamination, Jesus permitted her to touch his body. And her unclean body became whole. Her death became life. True faith always grows by testing. And then for the father of this 12-year-old girl, Jairus had suffered a great deal as well. He too was a person full of fear, fear for himself, fear for his family, fear for his future. He was a person tortured by fear. Well, the second invitation to you this morning is to let Jesus reach out and touch you. Again, for you, as with this poor man, that may entail severe testing. Jairus wanted to hurry Jesus up. Jesus wanted to take his time. Jairus wanted Jesus to ignore everybody else and tend to his needs, whereas Jesus wanted to minister to the needs of others, even in the midst of Jairus' traumas. We see the narrow picture, but Jesus views the full landscape. But in being tested by him, Jairus' faith in Jesus was wonderfully rewarded and his little daughter was miraculously brought back to life. Jesus reached out and met him where he hurt. Unafraid of contamination, Jesus stretched out his hand to touch a human corpse and the unclean body of that little girl became whole and death became life. True faith always grows by testing. Rarely do we get what we want the way we want, do we? But with Jesus, even delays, even bad news, anxiety, even suffering can be the very means by which we are forced to seek Jesus and to find in him true faith and hope. Do not fear, he said, only believe. True faith is self-risking trust in the Lord Jesus. For sickness was not stronger than him. And even the worst enemy of all, death, was not stronger than Jesus either. For faith in him takes all our fear away. So as we conclude this morning, there are two vital things for us to know. And I'd like to share them with you. The first one is this. Jesus isn't dirtied by our uncleanness. Instead, it is Jesus who cleanses us from all our dirt. Now, can you take that in? At the time of Mark's story, for someone to be touched by a woman experiencing bleeding was to render them unclean. But here, Jesus wasn't afraid of that. Instead, Jesus was prepared to take the woman's contamination on himself and replace it with his cleansing. And at the time of Mark's story, for someone to touch a dead body was to be made unclean. But here again, Jesus was prepared to touch the dead body of the little girl in order to replace it with his life and wholeness. Instead of Jesus being contaminated by our unholiness, Jesus cleanses us. So that's the first great thing for us to know this morning. On the cross... 
Jesus took on himself the dirt of our uncleanness, all our filth, all our guilt and fear, in order that he might replace it with his cleansing, forgiveness and life. And the second vital thing for us to know is that instead of Jesus being overwhelmed by death, Jesus overcame death. When Jesus healed this woman who had been suffering for 12 long years and raised this 12-year-old girl from death to life, it was like giving us a preview of what he will do at the end of time. Because Jesus accepted all our sinfulness and took in himself our sufferings on the cross, God raised Jesus from the dead. So that at the end of history, he will take all who place their faith in him by the hand and say, Arise. That will not be in secret, but it will be in public. Every eye will see, even those who previously ignored, mocked or jeered. So then, these two amazing stories, which we've read together this morning of Jesus cleansing, healing, and power, they are signposts, pointers forward to the better future God has in mind for the whole of his hurting creation. These are historical accounts of what Jesus did when he was on earth to point us forward to that future time at the end of history when everyone who hands over their fears to Jesus will be rewarded by the blessings of faith. And all who place their hope in Jesus will fall at his feet, no longer in anguish, suffering, or pain, but in adoration and love and praise. Let us pray. Forgive us, Lord, when we get steamed up about things that aren't that important. And we pray for those who have deep concerns over things which do matter. Fathers and mothers caring for sick children. Families experiencing deep trauma over recent loss, friends recovering from surgery, and those in the midst of sorrow and pain. We pray for those who seek to bring healing and wholeness to people experiencing trauma, for doctors and nurses, therapists, social workers and counselors, for pastors and members of the church community, for people who use their talents and abilities for the benefit of others, artists like Andra and Shimon who use their skill to bring encouragement and inspiration. We bring you people traumatized by fear, People whose lives are gripped by things from which there seems to be no escape. We pray especially today for the land of Libya and for people caught up in the violence in Bahrain. For your people there and for these locations, may fear be replaced by faith in the love of Christ. We think of members of our families and members of our church families who are far away from home right now and those at college or work. For friends in other parts of the world that we know and love, including Hungary, Moldova, Japan, Brazil, India and Nepal, and ask that in all these places they will be aware of your presence, comfort and peace. And finally we pray for ourselves. The Lord Jesus by his cross has made us clean from the contamination of sin. May we now be able to help others know his healing and his wholeness. And may he fill us with his love and enable us to look forward to that day when suffering cease, sorrows die, and every longing satisfied. Hear these are prayers, for they are offered in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we come to the end of this morning's service from Bloomfield, can I thank you for joining with us today? And may you know the presence of the Lord Jesus with you, who transforms our fear into faith. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Do you have a seat?